This is an extraordinarily delayed response to Dan Brown's open letter to educators. I've watched a lot of the response videos that have come from this. I liked a lot of things that were said by Fizzy Lyman. Human interaction is a very essential part of us learning anything. Hexacordal. Knowledge is like a complicated machine. You have to be taught how to use it before you can rush in and start pressing buttons and shit. Mikola. One of the greatest transformations that's happening because of the internet isn't access to knowledge. It's access to people. And even the harshly worded Thunderfoot. Just having a physics textbook doesn't make you a physicist. It is your knowledge of what's in the book and your ability to apply that knowledge that makes you useful to society. But I still felt that something was missing from the conversation. I would have made this video sooner, but I've been really busy working on my portfolio for grad school and writing lesson plans. You see, as a student and an educator, I'm deeply familiar with and concerned about the representation of the issues at hand. Um, um, and, um, alright. If this is the first time you're hearing anything about this, you'd probably be better off checking out the video first. I made a little playlist of the videos that I watched in order to make this response, and I put a link to that playlist in the doobly-doo. So Dan Brown, in your initial video you said many things. Something that struck a chord with me is how you said, we've lost sight of what education is. I think that when you say this, you're neglecting so many types of education. Indeed, there is institutional education, but even that varies from school to school. We have free schools, there's a whole unschooling movement. Though it's not so popular these days, you could certainly apprentice. There are trade schools. I think it's important to identify what is it that you're looking to get out of your education. Are you looking to get a job? Are you looking for respect? Are you looking for a deeper understanding of a topic? I'm not one who advocates that everyone needs to go to college. I think it's important to know what you want to do with your life. And if college isn't necessary to do that, you don't need to go. So you found a way to make money from your passion, and that's great. And you don't need school to do it, and that's great too. My passion is education, specifically art education, but I do have a passion for educating in general. Your passion supports you, so Shouldn't I be able to get paid for mine? The thing about education is that it can't be free. Facts might seem to be free, but as so many other people have pointed out, it's really important that you know how to use those facts and why to use those facts and where and when to use those facts, or they're useless. Even in K-12 through education, it's not free. It's getting paid for by the taxpayers, by the government. Education is always funded somehow, be it by sheer generosity and altruism, by the students up front, by the government, the taxpayers. And the thing about when education is funded, those who are doing the funding, they want to say. Now granted, it seems like you were speaking more about universities, and the research that I have done is more about K-12 through education. But I think that the situations relate closely. Throughout the history of education, there have always been competing groups. Whenever anyone tries to implement their special interests, there is always, always, always an opposing group trying to impose their opposing special interest. It's all very political. Whichever special interest wins at a given time is generally related to the social and political climate of the country. I've seen a dance back and forth between a focusing on excellence in education, specifically science, math, technology, or in worrying more about equity, making sure every child gets a fair chance at an education. I've seen a dance between having a vocational track for students who think they might go directly into a trade after high school or for a strict academic focus for every student, regardless of whether or not they intend to attend college after high school. And so you know a little bit about me. I first looked into this because my special interest includes concerns about declining mechanical aptitude in this country over the past hundred years or so. I wondered if the school systems were to blame, and I figured I would find it in the history of curriculum reform. Turns out, things weren't so black and white. So to echo the words of Nicola, Just a little easier said than done. Easier said than done. I think it's important to carefully consider your educational goals. Be familiar with a wide variety of educational options you have. And be familiar with the fact that those funding your education have their own goals in mind. To give a little example, there were many companies who were in favor of the vocational track because it saved them from having to spend the money to train their employees. So if you're in school to get a degree because it's required for your job, maybe you're dissatisfied by that. Maybe you feel you could have gotten the training better elsewhere. This relates to another dance, that of efficiency versus nuanced understanding. When a company sees the name of that school with those letters, they know it means a certain thing. And favoring efficiency over nuanced understanding while sorting through job candidates, it's sometimes a necessary hoop to jump through. I just want to thank you for continuing this discussion so I would have a chance to take part two. Oh, and Dan? I've... I've... I've...